Hi. I uh, understand it's been a few days since your surgery. What was your name again? Okay, I've got you up now. Understand it's been four days since your orthopedic surgery. Hmm. Normally you actually would be discharged earlier, but it seems that some of our staff who were on the wait list to assess you before you can be discharged have been a bit busy and preoccupied in the given situation. I know that the doctor for the ward has been a little bit preoccupied at the moment. Usually we have one ward doctor who's here basically all the time, but we've been sharing him with the nearby wards because the whole COVID situation, we've had to share out our staff a little bit. You can imagine that elective orthopedic surgery isn't necessarily that high on the list of priorities at the very moment. Now, I am sorry about the inconvenience though. So let me go and I shall take a little look at the other people's notes for you here and we can go through them step by step because I'm the last person to assess you before you get discharged and I just have to look through the notes that uh, the people have left about you just to make sure that you know everything and that you're prepared to go home and heal up and then start your valuable occupations and live your life again and um, yeah anyway so starting a load up which notes first? Maybe a scar injury loads first. Notice that your friend bought you a switch to play. I have a switch at home. I play Animal Crossing. Your friend seems nice. Okay. So. The lymph specialist came to see you from the lymphedema ward. Since they also have scar management training. Um, what did they say? Yeah. Yeah. And can you remember how to do that? Okay. It's fairly simple. But at the very end of the interview now, I will just go through a brief scar massage with you with some bio oil, just so you know what to do. And just so a professional can do it for you right now. Just so maybe you can get the feeling of a proper scar massage. And, um, the lymph specialist, they looked at your lymph swelling and they said that it was okay. They said it was within the range of normal. Okay. Let me move down the list. Sorry, it's not all in one concise document. Sadly, that it's not exactly how the systems work here in our hospitals or in this country. Um, each person kind of makes a new document in your patient kind of tree type thing that you have to navigate through. And the physiotherapist saw you after the lymph specialist and the scar specialist. Um, so I assume that the physiotherapist took you through the pamphlet or the booklet. Oh wait, they took you through the exercises the the pamphlet will have the exercises so you don't have to you know completely remember them in your mind so the pamphlet should have the last time I've seen it um, we have a new pamphlet for each of the major um, you know elective orthopedic surgeries like the shoulder hip the elbow stuff like that the knee in your case um, and so you should have got one about the knee and it'll have what information that uh, you need. Um, 
you know, should you avoid bending, uh, stuff like that. Exactly. So, let me... So you've seen the physio, and they assessed your range of motion, and how did your range of motion go? They say that your range of motion, of course, seems fine, even with the swelling that you have, which of course limits range of motion, but do you feel personally confident in your ability to do the exercises? Okay. Okay, moving on then. Now, you've seen the surgeon, and they've had a look at your progress. Um, very brief note here from them. Do you understand why the surgeon sees you? Yeah, I mean, it's not that complicated, really. It's just that they're the person that operated on you, and it's standard procedure for them to go around and check how the wound healing and everything's going and how the people are going. Um, and on that note, actually, um, uh, you're going to have to come back here in, I think, four to six weeks, and the surgeon is going to check on the scar healing again. Yeah, just so that you get a good, high-quality scar healing, and then they know for certain that there have not been any complications in the surgery, because... Sometimes we don't necessarily know the, if there is a complication until some time afterwards. Exactly so. Yeah, so you'll be coming back then. Uh, upon discharge, uh, if you see the people at the front desk, um, there'll be a note uh, with your drugs in your little pouch bag that you're going to be given by the uh, nurse. You've, okay, that you've already been given, and you just show that to the receptionist, and they will help you book an appointment, and if you can't decide right now, you can go and call back later at home. Okay, okay. And you remember, yeah, you're coming back in six weeks. What else have we got? So you do have the bag. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so you've seen the nurse and she's given you all the pain medication. Let me see what you've been discharged with. So I'm not... So it just says the actual drug name. You've got oxycodone. I think that on the label it might be by the company name Endone, I think. So that's what that is. If you're interested. Yeah. And in that plastic bag, of course, yeah, you do have the uh, little booklet about your surgery. That's actually made for this hospital in collaboration between the occupational therapy and physiotherapy departments. So it's very tailored to our surgery procedures. I think the last issue was a few years ago, and I don't think any major changes in surgery procedure have happened since then. Possibly the way that the um, surgeon stitched up, you know, you afterwards may be a little bit differently, just because surgeons don't do it all the same way, and standard medical practice for things like that does kind of change very frequently so that may not be exactly the same in the book but it shouldn't really change anything okay that's it for the people that have had a look at you um, so I've had a look through everyone that's talked to you so far so I've had a look at what everyone has said about you so far, and everything checks out, of course. Um, so you're almost ready to be discharged. Now, for the last bit here, I'm going to apply some, actually, Vaseline. Um, 
uh, and we use Vaseline or you can use bio oil is a very good one sorbeline anything really um, anything that would work and you need to remember to do your wound massage for a good amount of time at least three times a day so it really does change the outcome of the uh, kind of tissue uh, if you do help it with that extra blood circulation so let me just take off my watch and I shall um, get you just to lift up your leg if it's not too painful um, put this down here and okay let me just get some it's gonna feel a little bit weird at the start it'll feel cold but then as I um, as I move my hands you'll actually uh, you might be surprised to feel how hot it gets yeah it actually does change in temperature quite a lot okay I'm all <laughs> ready okay now just stick out your leg here and then yep okay you all good okay now while I do this I'll just explain some things to you um, reason we do oh do you see the circular motion that I'm doing that's how you do it anyway the um, reason that we do this is to essentially stop any really hard tissues from forming um, so the best you know of course healing comes from transport of nutrients you know blood helping transport and heal stuff so it's good to get everything moving so that's essentially what a wound massage does um, you get the best quality you know healing if you massage your wound daily um, of course as I said you should do it um, three times a day if you can um, wound massage it's interesting because it's one of the ones that people at the moment it's kind of one of the ones where you really should do it and a lot of people don't do it and then they really regret it for a long time after because um, in the moment it's not something you get instant gratification from even less probably than like an exercise like a physio exercise it doesn't really have that like challenging component to it but um, it's still very important so you kind of massage in this circular motion you go for a while and um, of course just like everything that we ask you to do this is shown to have a very high efficacy of course um, it does really help with wound care and uh, in the end you will end up with a much cleaner much smaller and less physically hard like softer wound uh, so you should really do it of course I can't make you do anything but Now, while I do this, we can also talk about pain medication a bit. Now, you remember the rules that the physiotherapist gave you about walking and everything? Yeah, exactly so. So, um, that should, you know, that 
if you break any of them, it's not like you're going to break the knee instantly or anything like that. <laughs> but um, they are very good guides because um, the things that it tells you to do are really like... They're things which put you at higher risk of re-injury or a worse injury uh, than before. You got given different time periods, of course, I would understand that you can do different things. So walking, moving about, doing activities like that should be a different, um, different, you know, length from now versus heavy sport activities. So kind of venturing towards more intense activities, you should be thinking about six weeks, but ten weeks for like, you know, stuff like contact sports or heavy weight lifting. Exactly. Now, talking about um, medication, as we see, we've you've got oxycodone. Uh, you should probably start taking that pretty soon. We'll go through that later. Um, to do with wound care, uh, there are a few things you need to make sure that you're doing. Moving often is very important because moving helps to transport nutrients, you know, lymph, squeeze lymph out of joints and move it around, move your interstitial fluid around, you know, all of that stuff to help move waste and carry nutrients around. It's very important. So keep moving and that will also help increase the speed and also the quality of the scar. And then, more than that, um, you're going to want to, if you currently smoke, or if you're thinking of picking up smoking, don't do it uh, in the next 12 weeks, or 16 weeks at least. I mean, I'd advise you never to smoke, but definitely don't do it in the next period of time, because smoking really slows down healing like a very significant amount. It's very, 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 um, very clear from uh, the evidence base that we have that the quality of scars, especially after surgery, um, like how hard they are, how large they are, stuff like that, is really impacted when someone uh, is a regular smoker or smokes and the time that it takes to heal is much longer. So please don't smoke during this period of time. Good. Okay. Now, one final tip. I know this from personal experience, of course, and also being a professional. And that um, right now you would be dealing with some of the effects from the pain medication, the analgesics that we've already given you. I think you're good. Now, right now you'd be dealing with some of the effects of the pain medication, the animal G6, and so you probably don't, um, you probably don't know exactly how painful it's going to be. So you've been prescribed a certain amount of your endone, your oxycodone, um, and I would remember to try, really try, and, um, take the required dose um, in the required intervals. So take how much they've told you, you know, if it's two tablets per blah, blah, blah. Do that first. Don't do it by feeling at the start. Because again, uh, we've put you on some kind of hard analgesics right now and you'll still be weaning off them right now. So you don't necessarily know how painful it's going to be and it may get more painful for a little period of time as well. Just, you know, while swelling and stuff like that is happening. Anyway, let me have a look on the list if there's anything I need to address with you. Um, yes. Oh, yeah, okay. So I can look here at the nurse. Wait, let me... Or I've still got stuff in my hands from the wound care. Okay. 
Let me search your time with the pain nurse. Yeah, so you have been prescribed oxycodone as is normal. Um, and your last, so, oh, okay. So about in half an hour, you can start taking your tablet again. Uh, so that should be after you get discharged and talk to the people. Probably the administration and stuff will take about 15 minutes, 20 minutes. So just um, keep an eye on the time and take your first dose of your pain meds. Basically after you talk to reception and stuff when you get discharged. And um, I'm sure your friend that's waiting uh, will be supportive and help you remember all of this and you know, help take you home and stuff. Um, yeah. I think that's it from my end. Do you have any specific questions or anything? No? <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. I think we have gone through everything. I think we've been comprehensive about it. Um, and... I think that it might be time for you to discharge. So no more lying in bed and playing Switch. Probably going to be <laughs> lying on the couch and playing Switch when you get home. Oh, okay. You're staying with your friend. That's nice. Hmm. That's good. That's probably a good thing in case you ever need any meal prep help or anything in the shower or anything like that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, um, I hope that you manage to heal up and that everything goes okay for you and that um, I don't see you again, <laughs> at least here, but maybe some other place, who knows. Anyway, I understand it's been a ride for you. Going through surgery is always a significant thing. But, you know, time to get on with the rest of your life. Okay. All right. And uh, just watch yourself on your way out, just because there's a little... Yeah. Okay. Bye. See ya.